You definitely want to make sure that you're figuring out those measurements. Uh, make sure that you are measuring twice. They say measure twice, cut once, measure twice, go shopping once. Hi, I'm Paige Killian, and I'm passionate about helping busy moms of littles get organized in three simple steps. So here's today's organization motivation. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining me again today for some organization motivation. Today, I want to talk to you about some fun things that we did in my dad's closet when I went back to visit them over the summer. So my sweet dad actually had had quite a few things in his closet that were weighing down this old system that had been put in place. It worked for a really long time. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, when my mom and I were chatting about it in this particular closet, we're like, you know, I think that wire shelving has probably been there not only since they had lived in the house, which I think they probably, oh gosh, I was doing the math the other day. My mom said 22 ish years. I think they've been in that house much longer than that because I graduated high school in 99. We partied like it was 1999. And then when I went to college, my freshman year, I remember I had to call my parents and ask them for Thanksgiving, which was the first time that I was coming back home in that school year, where our new house was. I remember when I was actually packing up to leave for college, I was also packing the rest of my room too, because they had found a house, bought the house. It was going through, it was a done deal. And I knew I wasn't going to be coming back to one of my childhood homes. I knew that as a semi sort of kind of adult, I think you're supposed to be like an adult when you're 18 plus, I knew that I was going to be coming back home to a new home. And I think that that house had probably even the closets in particular had probably been installed in the very early nineties. So if that is the case, these particular shelving systems that had been put in this closet that my dad uses, they were old. They were not super functional. So here's the funniest part at the very, very highest part. And these were high ceilings. The ceilings in the closet went all the way up to how high the actual ceiling is in the bedroom. And they're very high ceilings. And so we discovered when we moved in that someone had put a shelf that reached basically the roof of the ceiling just so they could hang stuff down. Now that was pretty much wasted space that was up there. So I definitely can appreciate that there was a shelf that was placed there. So if you wanted to hang stuff, but it was so difficult to access. I mean, you had to have a multi-level ladder. Uh, step stool was not even going to do the job to get all the way up to the highest heights to reach clothes that you potentially needed at the moment. But who's going to go to all that effort and energy to get up there? And so that really was just wasted space. It was not being used. And so when I got to Tennessee, my mom said, Paige, you're going to die. Or maybe you're going to be really excited because you're weird about this stuff. Dad's closet finally collapsed. The top shelf came crashing down, knocked down all of the stuff underneath it. And it was a complete disaster. And she said, just be prepared to take your before picture because I told dad, Tim, do not touch that closet because you know, Paige is going to be so excited to get here and redo it for you. She's like, just don't even do anything. And of course my dad, my dad, I definitely get a lot of that perfectionism from my dad because he really wants to keep things organized and nice and neat and things have their space. And he was like, I am not going to be able to go to sleep in the bed with all of this stuff spilling out of the closet. There's just no way I'm going to be able to sleep. So I commend him for those few days that they, everything was down in the floor all over the place. And he was somehow able to sleep until I got there. So when I got there, basically he went off to work and I took those before pictures and decided I wanted to get to work quickly. Now, what I could have easily done is just taken those shelves and drilled them back into place and put things back where they belong. But what do you know that I love to do? I love to do things in three simple steps. And I want to make sure not only is it simplified, but it's also really working best for my client in this particular case, my dad. And I wanted to make sure that it was serving him well. And what was there in the past wasn't serving him well. And when it came crashing down, two things there were issues with. Number one, 
it was a total disaster. They were all bent up and uh, broken. And so I wasn't even going to be able to use that shelf really. And two, because I knew that it wasn't serving him, I wanted to be able to install something that was going to give him access at a reasonable height to reach the highest part, um, and then have a little more shelving up on top of that. So if he wanted to have some keepsakes, if he wanted to put some shoes that maybe he was only wearing in the super cold, chilly, snowy winter time, but he wasn't using year round, different things that he wasn't using all the time. I want to make sure he had a space for that. So as I looked at that closet, I thought, what are we going to do? How are we going to lay it out? And I knew that because there is a container store that that is very close to where my family lives in Tennessee, I was going to go there and check out their alpha shelving system. Now I have used alpha shelving in many different rooms of the house. I have used it to put in a wrapping paper station, gift wrapping station in clients' homes. I have used it to go on the backs of doors and mount it in nurseries uh, for sweet little baskets that you can put cute little, you know, baby booties and diapers and wipes and pacifiers and cute little onesies. You get the idea, all the cuteness and functional things. Um, and I've also used it in pantries. Sometimes people use alpha shelving to put in their pantries. So I've used it in different rooms and of course in closets. So if you're trying to figure out where to go to get people who are knowledgeable about what it is that you're going to be mounting and using for years to come, I'm going to always suggest going to the container store. Their materials that they use, the quality of them is great. Uh, they often carry the same things over years. So if you do something one year and then many years later, you need to add to it or you need to do a little bit of a redesign, they're going to have a lot of those pieces or something that's going to work in your already existing alpha shelving system. And that is just going to simplify anything that you might do in the future. Now, on that note with the future, one of the things I was talking to my mom about when I was talking to her about how I was going to design it, I really wanted to make sure that if we put something like this in and invested in that nicer material instead of just the old wire rack that had been drilled into the wall sort of haphazardly, I wanted to make sure that she got her money's worth when we were talking about doing that. She kind of just hands over the credit card. I talked about it last week when I said when and what to paint, she'll sort of just hand over the credit card and be like, Paige, do your thing, do what you know how to do. So <laughs> this was something that I was really excited about doing. And I assured her that if they ever did end up relocating, that the cool thing about this alpha shelving system is that she was going to be able to, she, they were going to be able to actually take it and remount it in a different location. So that's what's really cool about alpha shelving is that it can be in all those different rooms of the house. Like I was telling you, you could do it in a garage. You could do it in any room of the house. So you can repurpose these items that in this case, they're going to get mounted in my dad's closet. So one of the first things I did is I went over to the back area where the closet design expert specialist was, and I chatted with her and I said, here are the measurements. So you definitely want to make sure that you're figuring out those measurements. Uh, make sure that you are measuring twice. They say measure twice, cut once, measure twice, go shopping once. So what I did is I took her the measurements of the closet. I made sure that I had the depth. So how far out we had from the back of the closet to where the doors were going to close. I had the height of the closet, which in this case, it was absolutely ridiculous. Cause like I told you, it went up so high, but the drop down, let's see if I can paint this picture, the drop down of the frame of the closet was so low. So as I said, when you step inside the closet and you look up to the highest height, that is really not usable space. And so there was that crazy high shelf that had been placed in there and just like it was not getting used. It was totally pointless. So the height of this particular closet wasn't necessarily something that I was worried about. What I did want to make sure is that I measured the height from the floor up to the top of the frame. So we knew how much space we had to work with so that my dad could then reach his hand into the closet and hang up on the highest row, uh, the clothes that he wants to hang. And then, like I said, I was going to make sure there was a shelf on top of that rod so that he could place some keepsakes, he could place boots or anything like that, that he wanted to keep up there, that he wasn't needing to access easily all the time without a step stool. 
So that was something that I made sure I had that measurement. And then also the length of it. Now, this is what was going to be tricky is because there's a fuse box that was in that particular closet. And I needed to make sure the door would swing open and closed on the fuse box. Clothes weren't going to be in the way. And then certainly those shelves that we were mounting weren't going to be in the way. So take a look at your closet space. And if you're trying to make something fit and you're doing those measurements, take all those little things into consideration. I actually just happened to uh, visit my bestie whenever I was in Tennessee and she took me in her closet because we had worked on that just virtually. Uh, I should take this moment to say, if I'm not local to your city and you are wanting to get organized, I offer virtual organizing session. You can go to everythingwithstyle.com over the contact page and uh, reach out to me and we will figure out a way to get a virtual organizing session on the books. And I promise we will get so much more done than you can even imagine. I'm sure you would think like, but Paige, you're not here to organize it yourself. You will be shocked at how much we can accomplish over Zoom. So I'm there for you and I'll be there to help you. All right. As I did this with my friend Tiffany, when I went to visit her in Tennessee, she was like, hey, come back in my closet. Let's talk about some of the things we worked on. Let's talk about uh, working on a couple other areas of it as well, now that you're here to see it in person. And as we did that, one of the things she talked about was how a lot of times in the pipes that are behind the walls, you can actually get these little pinholes and they can leak. And so she and her husband realized that there were some leaks that were going on. And so they cut out this big square to be able to get in and out. So for that, for example, we wanted to make sure that we weren't putting something in front of it that was permanent where they wouldn't be able to access the pipes if they needed to. So make sure that if you are trying to build out something that is going to be a little bit more permanent in your space in the closet, that you're taking those things like that into consideration as well. So armed with these measurements and armed with the issues in this particular closet that we wanted to be mindful of. I spoke to someone at the container store. We ended up finding a way to customize the shelving so that it worked well for my dad. And so we had the shelf on top, a long shelf. I want to say it was like randomly 72 inches because we wanted to make sure we were leaving enough space for that fuse box. And then there was a second shelf below and we wanted to make sure that that one hung properly. So here's what we decided to do. We got a shelf that you simply mount a metal strip with several screws based on how long your closet width is. And all we had to do was mount that one strip up at the highest position where we wanted that first shelf with the drop down rod below it to be hung. And you want to make sure you're taking into consideration. If you've got studs, then you can drill directly into that with a screw. If you don't have studs and it's drywall, you want to make sure that you've got anchors properly securing those screws so that things do not fall down. So on that note, I want to say that my three simple steps, just a friendly reminder, my three E's philosophy, your essentials, enhancements, and extras in this particular space, what we needed to do before we decided to hang all those things back up on that highest shelf. And then the second shelf was to do a good purge. So the essential for my dad in this closet was to do a great purge. So we took everything out, grouped things in like categories. He decided that he was going to take some of these things and put in a pile that he was going to have my brothers look at. And then he was going to take other things for donation and the remaining things we were going to put back into the closet because it was so heavy. It weighed it down and it just, there was not enough space for all that stuff to go back inside. He knew it. I knew it. We all knew it. It was time for a good purge. So he did a great job with that. My brother got a couple extra things that he was hoping for, and the rest went to donation. That was actually enhancement. That was where we took the stuff and donated everything that we had done with that essential purge so that it could then serve someone else. And then finally, the extra was getting the proper organization put in place. And that's where this alpha shelving came in. So after we measured that one strip, my sweet brother came over and he drilled that in for me. And then I just had four long vertical metal strips that had holes for the placement of the shelving to hook into. And this is what's so cool. I told you that if you do the alpha shelving in one area of your home and you decide to move, all you have to do then is undrill those screws, take that top strip to a different location, 
make sure that it works in there. If for some reason it needs to be cut, you can measure it and you can still cut it. Or you can go back to the container store and you can add on an additional strip if the space you're moving it into is actually larger. And then all you have to do is grab these. Now we did four in my dad's closet, these long vertical metal hanging strips. You simply hook them. They have a little bit of a hook at the top. You hook them along the top strip that you mounted with those screws and the weight of the shelving and the bar that goes in the weight of the clothes that hang on that actually holds it in place. So you don't even have to drill it down at the bottom. You don't have to drill in the second shelf that we had floating below. They all just hang. And then with the bar below those two shelves that we put in, you just hang the clothing that's on the hanger, the shirt and the pant hanger and the suit jacket hanger. You just simply have the weight of that, keep it in place. So it is a pretty cool situation with minimal mounting effort and energy. The timing of it is super easy. So that is all we did. We put in those two shelves up on top of the shelves. We actually got these clear plastic liners that actually would keep things from falling through. What dad had in the past was these wire racks that had all of these gaps. And if you have high heels, for example, uh, my dad didn't have those, but if you have high heels and you're trying to put those in, or if you're trying to place things on top that have something narrow or skinny, it can fall right through. And so there is a very simple solution. All you have to do is get these cool, clear plastic liners that go over the top to fit that particular shelf. And then you can place your items on top. You could do baskets if maybe you want to keep accessories in there. If you want to keep ties or belts or uh, bow ties or pocket squares or hats or anything like that in baskets, you can place those there. If you want to have things freely out, like for dad, I want it to be super easily accessible. So we have the shelf on top. We have the first rack. I made sure that whenever I hung those in place that I took his longest item, I put that up on top, grouped it in light categories. So his long sleeve pattern dress shirts, his short sleeve pattern dress shirts, his all white dress shirts, his short sleeve white polo shirts or casual shirts all on one area in that row down below, we drop down and we put some of his more casual stuff that he's going to be reaching for more often. Those are things like his uh, pants, jeans, shorts. We hung those up on pant hangers. So the shorts just hung down to keep room open in his dresser for other things he wanted to fold. Um, more casual t-shirts. We had a section that was all of his sports clothing. Uh, so just consider what it is that you're going to put in there before you hang things. But the beautiful thing about the alpha shelving is that you can easily raise. And my sweet mom had to help me with this because I realized that once we started to put something on the shelf, I wanted to make sure there was enough space for him to actually see on that lower shelf, his shoes that lined like right whenever he walked in, he could see, oh, I got my dress stuff up top, dressy clothes. And then there's a shelf that has all of my shoes that are easily accessible. So he doesn't, doesn't have to bend over and pick those up. And then down below it is the second row of all of his hanging more casual clothes. So again, you want to consider something that is movable, like alpha shelving, where once you put it in, if you start hanging and you think, you know, I actually feel like I want to make a little bit more space for this, then you can easily lift that shelf up, pop it up on the next rung on those four vertical metal strips that were hanging down that I told you about. We easily, I stood on one end, she stood on another. We lifted it and raised it to the next height that we wanted. So again, Alpha shelving has so many options. These were the ones that we used, but we could have easily put in lots of different things. You can add in baskets. You can add in drawers, mesh drawers that they pull out that you can organize things in as well. But he really needed a lot of that hanging space. So that's what worked for my dad's closet. There are endless possibilities with Alpha shelving. I highly recommend it and encourage you to head over to the container store online and check out some of the different stuff they've done, and then head in with your measurements of your closet, taking into consideration any specialty needs in your closet, and then take that to one of the closet designers there because they are super helpful 
They can tell you all of the options and they have a lot of really nice high-end finishes. And then they also have some lesser expensive things. If you need more of a quick fix or something simple, and then you can build on that over time if your needs actually change. So hopefully this was helpful for you today. If it was, share it with a friend, post it, tag me on social media. I would love to see that some of these things that I'm talking about are helpful for you. And always going forward, if there's an area of your home you need to organize and style, redesign, perhaps even repaint, let me know about it. I would love to talk about it on an upcoming episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And I'll talk to you next week for some more stuff that we worked on in Tennessee. I can't wait to share it with you. I'll talk to you then. Oh, and stop. <laughs> Take a drink, Paige. It's still going. Hey, thanks for watching this video. For more resources to organize and style your busy life in three simple steps, head over to everythingwithstyle.com and connect with me on Instagram at everythingwithstylemom. Don't forget to check out the Mom's Organization Motivation Podcast over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any of your favorite platforms. And if you love this video, it would make me so happy if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for watching and... Happy birthday.